says the generalizations and the foundation of the Torah, the written Torah. Also a teacher taught his Torah that he received a word of mouth to the 70 elders, that's the 70 top scholars of his generation. And at the end of his days, he handed over the entire responsibility of doing so to Yeshua, his top student. And Yeshua handed over to the, general, uh, the great sages of his generation. And after him, they learned and they handed over by word of mouth each of the sages of every generation, the outstanding sages from generation after generation, until they came to the generation of Rabbeinu. And he saw that the Jews were being exiled and they were being scattered among all the nations of the world. And he was worried that perhaps, God forbid, the Torah Shema, the oral Torah. So he stood up with the help of the sages of his generation and he, and he set up the Sefer of the Mishnah that we have today, including it, the most important of the foundations of the Torah Shabbat, or the oral Torah, in order that it should be available for every Jew. And he was the first from the days of Moshe Rabbeinu that to make such a uh, collection uh, available for all Jews to learn the Torah Shabbat. Then. But the mission that he had set up was also needed clarification. It was very cryptic and it had generalizations and important tips, but it needed more specifics. And so therefore, there had to be an additional explanations written around that time, utilizing the 13 principles of how we interpret the Torah. Uh, the Torah, the Rishad, the various things, you learn Rabbi Yishmael, you learn it every, when you daven just before Piskin and Zimra, and, and this would take, and therefore, it, the complete Torah Sheba al was not yet completely available to the ordinary Jew. It was only to the great scholars. Therefore, the sages of that generation, after Rabbeinu Akhorish, they, they had to go and make additional to retain this knowledge. And among this is Sifra, and Sifri, the Septa, and That all this, what all these, what the intents for all these were to further clarify the important aspects of the Mishnah, of the Oratory about that. And then we have irritations of their works. The Talmud. The Babylonian Talmud and the Jerusalem Talmud. First the Jerusalem Talmud appeared in Eretz Israel, and then the Babylonian Talmud appeared thereafter, giving, explaining the reasonings of the Mishnahs until everybody could understand, all the way uh, the sages of every generation could understand it, until the closing up of the Talmud. Talmud the the Yerushalmi was closed up about 350 of the Common Era, Talmud probably about 550 of the Common Era. And there, it contained the entire Torah about that, the entire oral Torah. All the clarifications and the explanations of the Mishnah and completely, and then after that time, they had to go and clarify it. So they would, um, and he says, this is what the Torah about that consists of. And of course, we've had Arayom, the present day, great fire, starting with you know, the, the Rosh Yeshivas in Babylon, and after them the Rishonim, and after them the Akronim, the period we're in now, that are constantly trying to make rules of decide questions of, based on the Talmudic literature. So he says like this, he says that twins, they're both given by God, and they are both necessary to be learned together in order to understand anything about one or the other. And he said, by all those, of all the generations, it was not set up in any particular fashion that you could take a posik and understand what the oral tradition is on it. If you want to discuss any posik, you have to go through an entire it requires a tremendous amount of learning to get to that capacity that you can go to Ganshas, to all the Gomorrahs, and try to learn out all the various 
subject matters that are concerning with any particular uh, rule of Allah. <laughs> As a result, even when we have commentaries, I say, for instance, we, he even mentioned the commentary of Rashi, which of course by us is Kochi Kedoshi, Holy of Holies. Everybody that learns Gomorrah uh, realizes that Rashi is par excellence in the capacity of explaining its explanation. Rashi can only explain it according to one of many that could possibly be the explanation. Therefore, we have other authorities also explaining it. And it would be foolhardy for anybody to assume that the entire understanding of how to decide a question by just following one opinion all the way through. This is what the article that Rabbi Dr. A. Turk in his Code of Responsa, an article he wrote that was printed in the Jewish press on Friday, January the 10th, 1986, that I had quoted from you. You recall that I had quoted in the earlier year that the Rambam wanted to make a code of the Talmudic law so that it become understandable the masses, the, the, the masses the, the, that explains it. And then Rabbi Abraham the Saint, the great derivative, argued with him and said that this is simplifies it. He thinks that he makes it there because in truth he didn't quote both his sources and anyway his work would be inadequate to decide a question of how to, so the, to continue uh, quoting uh, Rabbi Samuel H. Burke. He says like this, one does not necessarily come to definitive decision of the law from the Talmudic law source. Codes arrive at different and decisions from the same Talmudic source. When you learn in the Shulchan Aruch, you'll find rarities, each one a giant in capacity of understanding the Torah. It's mind-boggling. Codes of law rinse, uh, are completely are not comprehensive enough to cover all the possible varying situations. Uh, their formulations are meant for the average case, but where is the case ever? Where is the average case? Yes. Furthermore, the codified opinion. <laughs> Sometimes that's not av available. That's not really appropriate. Knows the law for the exceptional and unusual cases and can render a proper ruling. I call that to your attention last time. Knowing the leading opinion by studying the source. One may sometimes rule in accordance with it in an exceptional or unusual situation. As I quote you quite time, I get Baruch Hashem Shailas that is called on me all the time, and I have to know, remember what the Gomorrah says on it, and when I ask me a Shaila, because it's not the usual case, it's an extraordinary case. And I've yet to come across a huge case. average case. How to find an average case? <laughs> it's just like a, an average person, statistically. <laughs> Uh, there, but it really doesn't exist. These are some of the reasons why not all scholars are enthusiastic about uh, Maimon, even though they recognize some of its benefits and admire the stupendous effort and genius it represented. Also, the great rabbis were very, afraid, very much afraid that the code would reduce the study of the Talmud, which they felt would be a step in the wrong direction. After all, the Talmud is a source for all this, this codification. If you want to get something easy, people always want to know something easier. Bottom line, easy. So the publication actually defeated its purpose. The quote gave rise to numerous commentaries which sought to eliminate Rabbi uh, the Rabbit's uh, criticisms. Some of the commentary sources from which the uh, Maimonides drew his conclusion. Others sought to defend his conclusion from the attacks which are labeled against them. Thus, it sometimes would be a shorter process to go source and this report or all of the commentaries on the uh, Maimonides Code. Some of the same pity against Maimonides Code is uh, valid in regards to the, sh the Shulchan Aruch was later set up in the beginning by Rabbi Yaakov ben Rabin Osher, it's called the Balaturim, and he quoted many sources in his things, so therefore we accept him at more times than we talk to the Rambam. But even there, there are differences of, 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 and now he goes on, Rabbi Turk goes on to uh, complete his article and say like this, this here which was written in the 1500s already. This was was based on the Balaturim written in the 1300s. In the 1500s he wrote to the, in the final analysis, no code can supplant the study and knowledge of the Talmud. The fact that thousands of responses are being written to, in our day 
with sufficient testimony that there are questions that are not clearly covered by any existing code. Code suffice for general rules, the general case. They may be compared to a medical handbook which describes various maladies and their cures. Nevertheless, no one would treat a serious illness from a medical handbook. He would seek treatment from a highly competent doctor who would host that particular malady personally and then treat it. So also, one should not make a decision of Jewish law from knowledge of only the code. To write a responsive, responsive uh, means a, a, a true book, one must have a good knowledge of circumstances surrounding a particular situation, as well as a firm grasp. The law is not a straight jet, but there's a certain amount of flexibility in, see, in it. A competent uh, scholar of the Torah is aware of all the possibilities. That's the end of his article. To understand, uh, we have this. I want to give you why it is so difficult to understand the written law, just reading it. Uh, could you bring some Chumashi? Yeah. yeah. Gave, explained it out. No, he explained to all, uh, it, first to, to his brother, and then to the, to the elders, and right. then to all his... No, but let's say to the elders, right yeah. there, the seven the elders. elders. Yeah. No, I explained the both of them. At that time, wasn't it clear cut the halacha? No, sure, I mean, it was clear. In other words, there was one, there was one answer to the, to wait, the wait, wait. Even Moshe Rabbeinu from time to time had to go to God and ask him what the halach was. All right. So well, then he got the explanation yeah. and explained it to the elders, the answer to that particular problem. But problems have a way of cropping up that are not necessarily fully decided by a prior decision. Well, very that's all you need is a variation. Variation, and it <laughs> may have a different application. So you'll never get an explanation That's right. because there's always new things coming out That's scientifically. Right. The awareness of understanding of things that comes you become more aware of certain problems that may pass. Isn't that a rabbi can he go and look up a uh, place for his own day to day life? It's, it's very difficult because what, what does a person do in that situation? You have to ask a rabbi. So why do they have all these calls? I mean in they the they average case. Yeah, they make a legitimate question. Wait, what is this? So this is what I'll do. Yeah, I know, but Mr. Burr is not necessarily the, the halacha all the time. Uh, what are you going to do? Let me uh, finish. That, let's say in uh, in 10 years, they'll colonize the moon. All right. Let's just assume that. What's cool is that possible? Right. Now, they're going to have a problem. Let's say people are going to live on the moon. Yeah. We're into Davin, we're not to yeah. Davin. I mean, there's going to be a time element. Nope. Right, now, where, how are they going to get the explanation that that we have? We have responses being written every day. We have yeah. our, that are concentrating on modern uh, uh, problems, medical problems, yeah. uh, the space problems that well, we have yeah. at the present day. There are that's space their problems. decision collectively will be the halal. That will be yes. Uh, but we always go to the Talmudic. We have, if you will, as I said, we get to the Madriga. I'll learn with you the Shofar in the original. And you'll see that there are giants saying one thing right. and giants saying one well, sugar trying to figure out how you should pass an hour. Is it like Turk is wrong? It's possible, yes, but I doubt very much if he is because I happen to believe that what he says is basically correct. What if something, wait a second, you didn't know yourself again, I'm just talking about a kid, sir. We used to look in there and used to uh, find out what to do in certain situations. Now, if somebody looks in the Mishnah Bura, Okay, usually the halacha is more times than not. It's like him. I had a situation where one, where one of my Talmud, I'm not mentioning the name, asked Shiloh. Shiloh, and my Talmud asked him, isn't there any other opinion? He says, no, this is the opinion you have to follow. He came to me and he told me the situation. So I sat down with my Talmud and I learned with him seven other opinions that contradict that one opinion that was quoted by the row. And the majority opinion is not like she was possible. Yeah. The town misunderstood his man. Okay. I, I just yeah. have that feeling that he misunderstood. No. no, he asked him specifically because he had learned from me many years and he realized that there's no one answer to any of it. Yes, Maleo, you were asking a question. Can I have a question? All right, uh, all right. And, and he needs to find a case to call on the phone. You can't reach it there. You have to follow so you stop. On, on what the mission was. You know, the mission was. Well, that's, only, that's only until you can reach 
oppose it. Because, you know, Mr. Brewer has a, in his introduction to the Mr. Brewer. Can't cover all variations. Mr. Brewer says <clears throat> that if one tries to learn just from the Shulchan Aras, and he tries to find that this is the Allah Shulchan himself in the Torah, through many different That's right. cases, That's right. therefore, he says he wrote the mission of Brewer for this reason, so that it would be a mission of this Brewer that's clear, that you can that you can see and that this is not lost. I hope the, the Vilna Gaon. Yes. Vilna Gaon said in his time, which was 200 years ago, he says we've had so many responses written on, on Shilohs since the last major Shofanor was set up. We should have new commentaries written on this. And there came out of that because of that two big ones that we know about that we usually discuss, the Mishnah Bura and the uh, Or Hashem. But we have others that are coming up along all the time, Baruch Hashem. I said that's not necessarily uh, the Halach of Bismarck Is it more times than none, the Halach? Usually, if we summon But the Mishnah of passed away in 1933, this is now 1986. We have other, according to the needs of our generation. No, but there's so many things we get. The Moshe Feinstein comes out with a safer, we don't know what that is anyway. And that Baruch Hashem is not the only God of them. And this is Baruch Hashem. You, you want to know um, the order of God, you want to know what. Can you then go to the ordinary case? You would look, and but that would give you a rule of thumb that, that you. What do I do with this case? I can't do what they say. What do I do? Then you go, Rob, or you say, but, I do what they Not only that, a lot of times you have a child that personally concerns you, you can't, and you might be very prejudiced, and you might not be able to, uh, maybe, maybe, oh. may not be able to be enough objective, you're not more subjective to it, to the, the hospital. I remember, even after I got smitten, I had a shadow that concerned me personally, and I was not, I didn't want to go and ask the shadow, because, not because I couldn't look it up, it's just that I was fearful that I would be prejudiced, so I insisted that my Rebbe ask the shadow for me, because I would not take it upon myself to live with us to ask it at that time, because I, I wasn't that altogether Certain, I would not allow my personal feelings to get in the way of my uh, judgment. It's not easy. No. Uh, yes. Is this an all future? Absolutely. It's a mission of birth. I quote again, I'm quoting Rabbi Chaim, and in his, one of his forum, he's written, he quotes the mission of the Vilna uh, Gaon, says that you can find everything in the Torah. Of course, you have to know how to learn it to find it. But the the Mishnah, yeah, the Mishnah, yeah. The, the, the question that Joe asked about in the future. In the future, there will be no Shilas. We will have Shilas and we will have Chubas. We'll learn Torah if we, uh, we'll always constantly be learning and understanding and trying to understand new fact situations that develop. I feel like his question, how would you, what would you? Well, you'd be amazed with found that dog to try to figure out yeah. what to do with Would it surprise you to find in the top a reference to that the earth is round? Uh, yeah, that's what well, 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 Also, it talks about nothing is that. All right, but, you know, kind of, yeah, whatever it is. But uh, but now, pay attention now to page 136. Can you give me that? Per, uh, Perak Yudzai, Shoftim, we read the first. Can you uh, give us uh, a, a quick uh, translation of it? I won't hold you to it. Okay. Okay, fine. Yes, you can. Very good. Can you That's it's a matrega. I don't say that's something terrible. I think it's something a laudatory and should be emulated by others. Now, I'm going to read to you Rabbeinu Yonah, who was an explanation of the first Mishnah in Pirkeyot, a portion of it. Unfortunately, we only have two copies of it. Do you correct me, Moshe, or help me in case I stumble? Perkyova says, Moshe people Torah me Sinai. Moshe received the Torah from the time. Yeshua and handed over to Yeshua. Yeshua is king, he handed over to the elders. And the, and the elders handed over to the men of to the prophets. The Vim is Toru Alchikness Vidola, and the prophets handed over to the men of the Great Assembly. They would say three things that they emphasize. Adin be delivered in judgment. 
for a meet with some lady my babe and stand up as many students as you can with her and make offense to the Torah. Now in relation to the phraseology, Moshe Kibo Torah Misinai. This is what the Rabbi Yonah said. The Rabbi Yonah lived about 700 years ago. He was one of the last to be shown him. And he was a tremendous scholar. He wrote shortly. In the first mission, Kirti Avos states like this in relation to the phrase Yonah. He says like this. What did he receive? Bain Torah of the Psalm. Most received the Torah that was written. A bain Torah about that. Also the Torah that was oral. The Torah was given with its explanation. This is the Rishon talking. Okay, if this was not so, that we were explained the meaning of the written Torah, the actual would be impossible to understand it at all. It's written, one of the Ten Commandments you shouldn't steal. In the Lotigzo, the Ten Commandments is talking about don't steal a person and sell them at the store. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. A Lotigzo, a don't the cloud, and all the laws of damages is under that one general uh, negative commandment. You have to look. I think that would be like, like it's about, yeah, that's right. For, just before the destruction of the temple, they were hidden. <laughs> no, but uh, Jews have always, before a big calamity, they would hide these sacred vessels. And many of them were hidden. Many of them were taken away by the the, the going. There were a lot of things. But, but let's get back to the subject right at hand. Life of America. Sorry. Okay. All right. So, well, this thing, you have all this. So, if you just say don't steal, what are the ramifications? What are the specifics of don't steal or don't rob? And there you have to study many, many blocks of Gomorrah and Medrashim and other sources to find out all the specifics of them. They, this is also a part of God's law. It was received by... So you can't say that you just say, don't steal, and then don't, don't specify what it is. Or what you need what it, it would, what it encompass. And further, uh, even though it was actually written down at that time, for some it also is written, we would think, what kind are you talking about? Then being redeemed between judgment and judgment. Does that tell you what you're talking about? Between negative and negative, between some kind of skin disease and other kind, does it tell you what you're talking about? You just said a phrase. You know what it's talking about? You have no intelligence whatsoever. First, the uh, Kama Mara Dummy. There are many kinds of uh, colors of blood. And Malachis Nido. If a woman finds a spot, whether or not it is considered blood or is it considered something dark, it's some kind of excretion that comes from her that's not. A blood. I don't know. A common and many loving, they change around. What do you mean by that? Sometimes, at one time frame, this is the halacha, and then if you just move it a little bit, it changes. And this is not the halacha. You have the many of uh, these kind of examples where up to a certain point, this would be considered not kosher, and then after a certain point, it's kosher, or vice versa. Some to a certain point, it's coached on the different types of, of the formations of the lungs and everything like that. Yeah. All right. Maris and the the various colors of the skin diseases that were given to make a decision whether a certain person had had a certain skin disease that could be taken away or would be permanent or whether he's tummy or tore, he's unclean or the comma, the comma. How you doing, as they know, many things that we you know, I'll be a Kabbalah only. Uh, the Kabbalah to the Oral, do we know these things? Allah Khamesh Messina, we know him with Farshim. Farshim, we wouldn't know which way to go. For instance, we have Farshim, and they're not explained. He loaned me through the Kabbalah. It wasn't given originally to be written. Allah Khamesh Messina, Allah Khamesh Messina, Allah Khamesh Messina, I give to you the, the, the Tablet of Farshim. Stop. Again, he's quoting the same thing that the quotes and also which the Gemara and, and the Brachas also quotes. There's many sources for the same subject matter. A mitzvah zu Torah shem nimtis Omar, so we see from here, Kola mitzvahs, shenit la Moshe b'sinai, all the commandments that were given to Moshe at Sejim Mishnah, they were given with its explanation. So, and what was written called the Torah, the Ha-Perush, and the explanation, Hula Mikro Torah Shem Ha-Perush, it's called the Oral Torah. A Moshe Lomot es hakol. And Moshe learned everything from the mouth of God. The Almighty. 
and uh, most of Yeshua and all the others and over there. So we have this sequence of events. And we have a few other examples here. In, well, I would, uh, in the morning, it just says like this, your days, in the morning, where else would you know? So naturally, what else would it go to something you're talking about, Shlita? <laughs> or is that your days you smacked them, or is that something else? Yeah, on the top. Third chapter of Pesach. Ki yirchak mimcha hamakom ashe yikar tovasun shmor tvachtov mikorcha umitzoncha asher nosan anay v'chak yisharecha v'chol avas nafshecha. Alright, can anybody translate it? Okay, when the place when the place is far from you, that the Lord of your God chooses to place His name, and you should and you should um, to you as He has commanded you, and you should eat in your gates with all the other all the. Last of all, you should slaughter. Is a parah from Yitzanachal, from your cattle, from your sheep. And the Lord your God gave to you as he, I, he commanded. You look through the entire Torah. You can't tell anything about Shekhar. Uh, it doesn't say a yeah. word about Shekhar. No, there's no Not a word. There's no Shekhar. It just says, uh, the Zvichar. Uh, mm -hmm. Slaughter, but doesn't give the specifics. Mm -hmm. uh, so look at Rashi. Uh, first, a uh, top line on page 127. Lamadnu, uh, first column. Look at Zvichar. There are commandments in relation to slaughtering. Go call a person to slaughter. Ain hilkas Shekhar. And these are the, it was told about, unless you knew what the halach, you couldn't possibly understand what to do and what to avoid and how to do it. How could a person be a sheikh? How can you have kosher shkita without anybody knowing it? You learn the Gemara. You learn the Gemara. Who in the test of an halach? You say, you see, it says any sheikh. It doesn't know the, the laws of Shkita. The five mismotions that can happen in Shkita is Shia that's causing Shia. Shia dress Chaloda is hidden. Brahma is slanting out from the area that's permitted to be slaughtered on the, on the animal or the. Or the uh, and Iker is tearing rather than cutting. What do you mean by tearing? If you have a pagima, a, a nick in the, underneath, Brahma is slanting out from the area, Iker is tearing. If you have, you ask about what tearing. It will be tearing rather than cutting. Oh. And that's why a pegima, aser, is tearing rather than... It's brought to us in, in, in your day, a section called your day, in Simon Chof Gimel, in the 23rd chapter, in Sif Aleph, in the first paragraph, quotes verbatim this So you know, he quotes verbatim for a And this is the way you have to understand everything. So I hope we have given you some of an understanding of how important it is that you should become uh, knowledgeable and capacity-wise to learn the Torah about that, the Gemara, the Mishnah, and the posting, the codes on it, because this will lead you to the real understanding of what the Halach is, how you're supposed to live according to the Torah of God. According to the will of God, according to God's law. Yes. Every time we see practical Judaism being done, it's never done though, like the Chumash gives a commandment, and you give one thought, oh, the Bible of Moses says everything in it, and then you looked and saw practical Judaism. This, this is nothing this that it says. What do you have to go and do all that for? The Chumash says this. Is this. You know, there's, there's much more to, to the whole the whole ball of wax. I might close this year with just the. Uh, a little minor that I learned in the Talmud Yerushalmi, in the in the Peya. It says there about kilo Reiki, It's not something that's about all. If you work hard at it, if again, if you work at it, if you want the Torah to be influencing in your life, you have to work at the Torah. You have to work at it, and as is Hashem, a the person comes to purify himself. The Gemara says in Yuma and the Aflam and Ches, the way in the bottom of the, it says there, among other places in Shas, that about be helped by God. A, God will help you if you are serious about learning Torah, especially Torah about the oral Torah, which is the explanation of the written Torah, which is the soul of the Torah, the real understanding of the Torah, you must submit yourself to really work at it. That is the only thing. As a matter of fact, the third mesh in the Parshish Noah, in Medrashtan Chumah, says this specifically. When did God make a covenant with the Jewish people? He made it specifically 
the Torah Shabbatah, the oral Torah, this is the covenant. A person that observes this particular commitment of such a person is the foundation of the world. On such a person depends the future of the entire world. This person is for which the God created the whole world. Sabbat Yisobo Allah is the foundation of the world. Yeah. That's the third, uh, third stop. Okay. All right, we'll call this a ship.